Can I ask him a question? Yes. How do you feel just in general now, about your life? He's awesome. No, don't answer for him. Looks great. Oh, looks good, right? Yeah. You haven't seen him in a while. No, yeah, it's been a year or something. He looks so good. He looks better than you look. Right? Go ahead. Grab the mic, bro. Oh, we're doing it. You're the you're the green one for Asian. You know that's Fred's. So you've never done a podcast? No. What? I have never done a podcast. Oh, Fred <laughs> Durst. Yeah. What's up? So how does it work? Are you live streaming? No, we're not live streaming. Have you seen Bobby before at the store? Oh, yeah. I've seen Bobby at, at a, several places, and I've never seen the camo Birkenstocks. Oh, yeah, that's why I bought them. That's tight. Thank you. What? Am I the first comedian that you ever met? First. First, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, but then once you moved out to L.A., you started going to the store a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, I was going to the store and... Uh, just never had seen live stand-up comedy before in my life. I'm from North Carolina, and you were, for me, you were a television persona. Of like, oh my god! And Fred was, uh, Fred was just starting to break, and that was with, uh, I think it was the George Michael song "Faith." When I put the band together. I kind of had this concept, and you know, it was like this rap rock sort of experience. I wanted to be a director. I wanted to direct the videos, so I put together this band of kind of my favorite styles and. The thing is, everyone hated us so much that I came home one day because we play these little spots. Because where we, where I put the band together, people didn't like that kind of music. Uh, and so I came home and I said, "Let's do a cover of George Michael's Faith, and that'll be our ringer." So when everybody's booing us, we'll bust that one out, right. and people will be like, you know, people will be like, "Oh, they're going." <laughs> I don't know, fuck, it's all killer. It's a joke, right? It was yeah, kind it's of a, a joke. joke, and it worked every yeah. time. So I decided to put it on the record. It was always just a joke. It was our Ringer song, and we had to use it <laughs> to... That was sick, and that was 1998. I had done MTV. I did all my films, and my jig was up. It was time to, like, kind of put it away, kind of... And it was like I was in that transition period that a lot of actors or musicians or, uh, you know, personalities, comedians, that they get in. So I met you at a time in my life where things were, like, fucked up. Like, I had gone through this, like, seven-year run from, like... Not Bobby, what was I like back then? Well, you're different now. Right. I, I prefer you now than then. But I felt bad for you because you, you were like outwardly like sad. Mm. Like one time I was at the comedy store in La Jolla and you were in the back. Literally, you had like an American Indian tear coming down your face like somebody had littered. You know, the American Indians, when you litter, they cry. He did that in the back like that. I go, what's wrong? And I, I was so young then that I didn't, I didn't really, he was, I was opening for him on the road so I felt like I crossed the line but he was really sad I wanted to give him a hug but I wasn't there there yeah, with him so, I, so, I'd, yeah. I'd, hug, I'd hug you now yeah that, so, right, right. so that was so that was the time where I first came upon Fred did I witness that? Fred, did I just witness that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it was epic yeah, yeah. I inspire Paulie Shore to go take it upon himself if you want something done right you got to do it yourself yeah you got to do it yourself yeah and I believe in you yeah definitely thanks for doing that bro that was fat you came into my life at a, at a crucial time where I was going through just some weird changes. And, um, and I thank you for that. You know, and I thank you for that. That was, that was awesome. My brother. Fred used to record his fucking albums that are huge, massive hits right now. The albums that came out when he fucking went to Interscope Records. He used to record across from Taco Bell on, on Beverly and La Cienega. There was a studio there. And he used to record there. And guess who fucking came in that studio that was going to do a, a, a song with him, Madness? It was Eminem. Eminem came in the studio and recorded with you. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. We actually, we had bonded through an Interscope. And then we met and he hung out there and we were working. Uh, working together we recorded this little thing called turn me loose that leaked out on the internet he was so good and we bonded and so we decided to do a tour together and we did anger management together and everything and he used to come on our tour bus yeah and on tour with us yeah. and <laughs> and everybody's bugged out it's probably sure yeah. but he would be walking around at night in a bikini underwear with a <laughs> patch of pubes sticking out of the top yeah like 
and just rubbing his nuts the whole time and sticking his hands in his pants. And we, I think we were all like, this is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> this is how. Could you, you did my music video too. I don't know. We've done some awesome stuff. You did break stuff. Yeah, we did that. What about In Together? In Together. That was amazing times. Right? Tell yeah. us about the songs that are... What the fuck are you laughing at, bro? I, I, this I, guy's I'm made so millions of fucking... I am so happy of fucking that I just records. laugh because I feel the joy. Okay. You know what I mean? So please don't put that down. <laughs> you can't break a man's spirit. Yeah, if he's feeling it, I, I you just got to let him go. I feel like I'm in North but Korea and you're my fucking my That's prisoner. racist, number one. My prisoner. <laughs> number one, that's racist. <laughs> number two, it's true. Right. <laughs> that's what makes it funny. You know, let's so move on. tell us about the songs on that album because that, that's it. That, was, that fucking album uh, was insane. Ring your range, sing some of the, that that those lyrics. Please. You don't understand when I'm attempting to explain. Because you know it all, and I guess things will never change. MTV. You were the king of MTV. No. Yes, you were. You did those. I was at one point, but you were the king at MTV. You did all those videos, and and Carson Daly was on on TRL. TRL. And you were on there with Britney Spears. You're on there with Christina Aguilera, In Sync, Corn, and that was like boom, 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 boom. And then you were on TRL a lot. Mm -hmm. So what was that that time in your life like? Because I was hanging out with you, but for you, what was that like? It was just moving so fast. Mm. You know, I'm a simple person, mm. and uh, you know, just the fuck you laughing at, very dude? Complicated. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of his fans right now so when they listen to this I know but there's just a way to talk to people and that's okay, not the way Okay then you ask him about it though How was that I'm a simple guy you know I know you are and um <laughs> it got complicated <laughs> Yeah it's complicated right It is complicated because I created that thing mm. and uh and always having to turn that thing on you created the weasel mm. so you had to turn the weasel on every time there was a camera, every time there was something. And so your red, your red hat—that was part of it. That was yeah, like my hair. Yeah. Right? I had to turn it on, 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 you know, on demand. So the, the, that whole thing. So for me, when it was the weeds with the hair and the scarves and shit, that was a big deal. So at that time, you know, you were, you were, you know, buying Rolls Royces. I remember when we did Polly Shore's Dead. When you played that part, when you come down the street, you were in Polly Shore's Dead. No, I was cut out of the fucking movie. You, did you not cut me out of the fucking movie? Did you really? DVD extras. I know, but did you? <laughs> no. Hey, let me ask you something, Paul. Did you cut me out of the movie? I did. And, and, and is that friendship? No, no, it's, it's not. not. It's, it's not friendship. It's pacing. Did you not need the scene? Or did you... What is this, Star Wars? It was a funny scene, dude. It was not DVD extras. Oh, it's on DVD extras. That feels yeah. so much better. Hey, wait, wait. Can you at least help me with the boxes? <gasps> I'd love to bring in your boxes, P. Shore, but I'm late. I was supposed to do a drop off at Dean Kane's house an hour ago. Where the fuck am I, Vietnam? Hey, well, tell Dean I say what's up. Yeah. That's on DVD extras. These because days, that's the shit. Okay, this next. I know, but no. the thing is, is that when you're showing a girl, Back like then, I'm in it his wasn't movie, the and then you watch the movie, and then you're not in it. Rage, let me tell you that right now. And he should tell me I'm, you you're not in the, the movie. You were at the screening. Yeah. And you weren't in it. I wasn't in it. It's a friend. So you just you just, you just, just came back from Mexico. Just got back. Let me talk about this, though. Oh, like, shit. what's going on? Because we're talking about like, in the past. I know, but like, I want to talk to him what's how he's feeling just in the moment and who he is. Oh, I you know forgot I mean? you guys are both hosting. Go. How do you feel? You feel great? I feel very inspired. Good, man. I like this chapter in my yeah. life. Yeah. See how that feels? Evolution feels wisdom. You just look uglier. Let's say goodbye in Asian language, right. please. Thanks. I will. I'm not. I got big I'm... I got, got big dog Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you laugh at that, like that hard, it encourages him. Yeah, but that, but that, that, that Chinese. <laughs>